The group chief executive officer of the NNPC Limited, Mr. Milikiari, has joined a list of guests to anchor the ministerial weekly briefing. He addresses upfront the subject of theft of the nation's crude oil, which has continued to dominate conversations for years. He absolves no one of complicity. When a fire outbreak happened in one of our pipelines, now we discovered that some of the pipelines are actually connected into individuals' homes. And not only that, and without really, uh, uh, with all sensitivity to our religious beliefs, you know, some of the, the pipelines and some of the products that we found are actually in churches and in mosques. That means that everybody is involved. There is no way you will take product, bring in trucks in populated neighborhood, load it and leave without everybody else knowing about it. That everybody includes members of the community, members of the religious leadership, and also, and most likely, government officials of all natures, including security agency personnel. They are everywhere. He agrees that the magnitude of theft and the impact on the nation's economy is undoubtedly substantial, but not up to 200 million barrels per day, as reported. A national reserve company will be established to run the pipelines on a commercial basis to contain the menace. Because of the very unfortunate acts of bundles, along our major pipelines, from Atlas Cup all the way to, uh, to Ibadan, and all the others connecting all the 27 depots that we have across the country, you know, none of them can take delivery of product today. And the reason is very simple. For some of the lines, for instance, from Wari to Bini, we have an operated line for 15 years. Every molecule of product that you put gets lost. 295 illegal connections, 344 illegal oil reservoirs, 759 metal tanks, 37 trucks, 450 boats, 355 cooking pots, items used by the vandals to carry out the activities, particularly in the Niger Delta region, have also been discovered by security operatives, and these have led to a number of arrests. I told you there are 122 arrests. They will be named. But definitely the most important thing to do is to prosecute them and show to the world that it's wrong to do this and that if you do, the law will catch up with them. That is why I said that the EFCC is following the cash. Responding to questions on the high cost of importation of fuel, the group CEO disclosed that there is the feasibility that Nigeria would halt its importation of petroleum products by mid-2023. Small, modular, uh, uh, condenser refineries that we're building, if that happens, and we are very optimistic it will happen, uh, you will see that this country will now be a net exporter. As a matter of fact, it will be a hub of export of petroleum products, not just to the West African sub-region, but to the rest, of, uh, the rest of the world. This will happen. The flow of supply will change. By middle of next year, it will change. The group CEO has also responded to questions about the engagement of ex Niger Delta militant, popularly known as Tom Polo, explaining that a federal government signed pipeline protection contracts with corporate entities, one of which Tom Polo has interests in, in order to man the right of way and manage members of the community. From the presidential villa, Gloria Umezuke, Channels Television News.